everyone. We're going to get started in just a few minutes. So if you wouldn't mind taking a seat, we'll get started in just a few moments. There's still great seats remain. We'll get started.
Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Thank you for being here today. Welcome to the Huntington Field Club at Lower.com Field for a special press event. It is a momentous moment for our club. And we're here with us, members of the media, staff, alumni, friends, partners, and all of those who are rooting for the crew, both here in the room and watching online on ColumbusCrew.com. Today, we'll introduce someone very special. And as part of that, we'll have a couple of gift presentations and photo ops. So for our friends in the media, please know that there will be various photo opportunities throughout, as well as afterwards. And we will have a Q&A portion at the end. <coughs> Want to thank you all again and turn it over to our investor operator group. Please welcome to the stage J.W. Johnson and Dr. Pete Edwards. Good morning and welcome. Uh, really excited to be here today and excited for another massive announcement in this great club's history. Also want to thank uh, our, all of our fans and, and partners for being here, but as a, as a family and as an organization, we are beyond excited for the 2023 season. And we know Tim and his team are doing an outstanding job building a championship roster, and our goal here is to win championships, and uh, I think we're, we're on the cusp of bringing more cups back to Columbus, so exciting times ahead. Also, I'd like to thank our fans, and I'd like to thank our, our, our great supporter group, the Nordeca, for being here. We know your passion, your energy. You bring it every match, and we can't wait to see you back here in this great fortress at Lower.com Stadium uh, and to be cheering this, uh, this great team on and, and a, a new man that you'll meet here shortly who I think everybody will be very excited about. So also want to thank our great corporate partners and their continued support of this great club and, and the crew. And again, we're just beyond excited for this upcoming season for years to come. And with that, I'll turn it over to our great friend and partner, Dr. Pete Edwards. Thanks, JW. So today really is an exciting day for us. Um, and we, we can't thank you all enough for coming out to share that for us, uh, with us. You know, today is a game day. And hopefully you all are feeling the excitement of soccer around the world. And hopefully lots of you have been down to watch games in the pub or with the 2,500 other people who came to the USA game last weekend. We're thrilled that people are feeling the energy of the world sport, and we're glad that we have it here in Columbus. So as excitement builds over the next four years, it's only going to get more. We really hope that people will fall in love with soccer just like I have over my last 30 years of being involved with the sport. But Love of the game is what we're bringing to Columbus, and we're so excited about that. We'd like to thank some special guests, too. Um, Dr. Dixon from uh, Columbus City Schools, um, thank you very much. Uh, Director Reese from Parks and Rec, thank you very much. Um, and, of course, uh, we can never thank uh, the Nordeca enough because they're the heart and soul of our club, and we're so excited to um, move forward with you at, at every opportunity. Uh, so go crew and uh, go USA soccer for four years from now. <laughs> Next, I would like to welcome to the stage crew president and general manager, Tim Bezbachenko. Tim. Good morning. It's great to see everyone here today, surrounded by friends and family and partners. Uh, in this beautiful space. Um, thank you, Dr. Pete, uh, JW, appreciate those comments. Um, there's, so, there's so many things in, that we want to talk about today, and, and it, really talks, it really starts with talking about one person. But before we get to that, we're going to talk about the club. With the new and evolved One Club philosophy, we are equipped with talented players, staff, coaches, and execu executives to champion Columbus on and off the field as charter member number one of MLS. Today marks another step forward. A 2022 MLS Coach of the Year finalist, our new coach has a growth mindset and deep background in player development. He is knowledgeable about both the domestic and global game of soccer. These attributes, among others, position our club to be able to not only develop players, but to compete at the highest level, all while entertaining the fans. So without further ado, I would like to run a brief video before bringing out the man of the hour.
Ladies and gentlemen, the new head coach of the Columbus Crew, Wilfried Nancy. Before I let this man speak, I know I'll try to be brief, although Dr. Pete and JW say that's a challenge for me sometimes. Um, one of the key pillars of our mission um, ever since the Haslam Johnson and Edwards took over, families took over, is to be a consistent contender for championships. The league's trajectory, especially towards 2026 when North America hosts the next FIFA World Cup, demands a leadership style which can keep evolving and changing with the game. We as a club must also evolve by growing our fan base and creating a first-class experience for those attending a match for the first time or the hundredth time. I want to thank the Haslam Johnson and, and Edwards families for the ambition to allow us to go out and get the right guy for the job and for their ongoing support as we seek that on-field consistency. And lastly, before I turn it over to Will, I want to share how we arrived at the right coach. As we said from the beginning, we're gonna be focused on three elements uh, to the coaching search. It's gotta be the right person, we're gonna right person for the club, and the right coach for the club. So as a person, as I talked about in the video, we wanna make sure he's a quality person, a leader, someone that's focused on learning, that's collaborative, someone that's innovative, that thinks about the game, not just about today, but tomorrow. As a fit for the club, we wanna make sure that this person understand that we are a club-centered model, and they understand their role within the wider uh, and broad landscape of what we're trying to achieve. Importantly, it's about the player pathway, that we're a part of not just the first team, but there's the academy, the youth soccer, uh, crew two, and then that all leads up to the first team and what we're trying to achieve, which is to win championships. And then lastly, but most importantly, as a coach, tactically, flexible, understanding that the opponent will change and in game, before game and in game, there, there has to be moments where you can adjust and change. And we saw that with, with Will, not just this year, but over the years. And lastly, the style of play is identifiable and recognizable. So in Wilfred, we feel, we feel like, and we know that we got all three uh, elements correct on this. So I'd like to turn it over now to a local, well, local students to formally welcome Coach Nancy. I'm joined here by Columbus French Immersion School A. Cole Kenwood students, Anon and Solvay, who would like to officially welcome our newest leader on the sidelines. Je vous salue. Je m'appelle Anand. Je suis en cinquième année. Bienvenue à Columbus, on est ravi de vous recevoir. Mon sport favori est football. J'aime faire du football à Columbus. J'aime l'école Kenwood parce que j'ai des amis là et c'est une très bonne école. J'aime aller à l'école parce que c'est amusant. Allez, l'équipe de Columbus, bienvenue à Columbus. Allez, Columbus. Je vous salue et je m'appelle Solvay. Je suis en quatrième année. Bienvenue à Columbus. On est ravis de vous recevoir. Mon sport favori est natation compétitive. J'aime faire l'équitation à Columbus. J'aime l'école Kenwood parce que j'aime l'apprendre français. J'aime aller à l'école parce que j'aime être avec mes amis. Allez l'équipe de Columbus. Bienvenue à Columbus.
Thank you. Thank you. Uh, it was in French, so to translate is going to be a little, a little bit long, but uh, um, thank you so much. I didn't uh, expect that. So listen, um, I would like to thank, first of all, I'm really happy to be here. I would like to thank uh, all the organization, especially uh, D and uh, Jimmy Aslam, also GW, also Dr. P, and uh, all the ownership group, and uh, obviously uh, Tim, who uh, without him and Isa, without them, uh, it's, it's, it was impossible for me to come here. So really happy to be here. I am a soccer coach. As you know, I love my job. I'm passionate about the game. Um, I love people. I care people. Because for me, yes, I am a coach, but this is really, really important to understand and to understand people. And uh, by doing that, we're going to be able to do something great. I believe on what we do. I believe on what, what, what I do also. And um, I'm just happy to be here and to enjoy what we're going to do. Thank you so much. Stand over to the side here. For a yep. Thank you, Wilfred. Next to the stage, I'd like to welcome Carla Williams Scout, Director of Department of Neighborhoods in the City of Columbus. Carla. Good morning, Coach. And again, it is an honor to be here with you this morning. On behalf of the City of Columbus, I would like to present you with this custom jacket curated by the Columbus Fashion Alliance and its brilliant roster of creatives. creatives. Columbus is a diverse and vibrant city built with some of the best and brightest residents, and we are happy to welcome you and your family as our newest residents. We are excited for you to explore our neighborhoods and all that Columbus has to offer. Again, welcome to the city. The gifts keep on coming, Wolfrey. Thank you so much. <laughs> uh, next, to represent our friends in the Nordeca, please welcome to the stage, stage Jeff Barger and Courtney Sullivan. I just like to say on behalf of the Nordeco, we look forward to working with you to make lower.com field the greatest soccer atmosphere in the MLS and hopefully the entire world. And we want to welcome and partner with you for that. Uh, we're incredibly honored to have you here. And we look forward to supporting you and the team all the way from the first kick at Christmas through the last kick of the season. And we know great things are coming. So thank you so much for being here. We're excited to support you. At this stage, we are going to do our media Q&A, so please give us a moment as we reset the stage. As a reminder to our friends in the media here in attendance, you could introduce yourself, say where you're from, and to whom the question is addressed. Tim Bezbachenko and Wilfried will take questions, and then afterwards, Tim and Wilfried will be available for additional one-on-ones. So we'll get started in here in just a moment, and be on the lookout for Eunice in the galley to pass around the mic to, for media questions. Off with Bailey and then Clay. Welcome, Wilfried. My name is Bailey Johnson. I'm the beat writer from the Columbus Dispatch. Uh, this question is addressed to Bez. Um, 
you mentioned the elements you guys were looking at in this search and why Wilfried became the number one candidate. Can you just break down those criteria again for us and sort of how this process developed as you identified him as your number one option? Sure. Obviously, the search began um, after the season was, was over and we realized that we needed to make a change. And um, we and our leadership team and ownership group talked about what we want to be as a club going forward. Um, and, and part of it was started with which individual we want to come in to lead this, this club and to be a part of what we're trying to do in this new era. Uh, so it starts with the person and the values that they bring. Uh, so when we first sat down to talk with, with Will, um, that's the first question I ask, right? right? Is, is, is what are your values? What's your value set? What do you live by? What will be the first thing that players and people will say about you if I ask you about uh, them about you. Uh, and it was very clear that the number one was was, was passionate about the game, um, that he is innovative and, and changes things up. He's versatile uh, and he's humble. And and I've, as I've gotten to know Will even more, I mean, that's, it's, it's extremely clear to me um, that he leads with compassion, that he shows vulnerability um, because he believes that that's, that's how you get the most out of the players. And that's where it starts. Um, obviously the second, and third things were, uh, you know, how he fits within our, our, our club structure. And then, and then more specifically, as we got along in the process, it was about, you know, how does he see the game? What's his soccer philosophy? And he can, he can tell you uh, more about it than, than, than I can because it's very specific. He's uh, detail-oriented in the way he looks at the game, his approach. We've already started uh, talking about players, and, and he's turned down, I think, two of the three players have already been presented because they're not exactly a fit for, for how he sees the game. And, and that's what I like about that is he's, he's, he's very comfortable in saying no. And we actually talked about that yesterday is, is in this role, you can't just say yes, you have to be comfortable saying no if it's not the right, right thing. And that's what, what, what Will brings to the table. So then for you, we afraid going off of that, can you break down your soccer philosophy for us and explain what drew you to this job? How long do you have? <laughs> I've got all day. Uh, I'm going to try to be uh, to summarize. Uh, listen, um, like I told you, the story, uh, my story with, uh, with uh, soccer is a, is a passion. So I, I would define my style of play by two things. Uh, the boxing part and uh, the chase game. Why? Because the boxing part for me is really important because it's, I need intensity. The players, they know that, they're going to know that we need to be intense, not only intense physically, but also intense mentally. So we want to be able to, uh, to be an aggressive team, to be able to, uh, to, uh, to win the ball back as soon as possible, to, uh, to be difficult to play against. So for me, this is a key point. And also, when we have the ball, we want to, uh, to uh, put doubt on the opposition. So try to manipulate the opposition. If we need to make uh, 15 passes to score goals, we're going to do it. If we need to make two passes to score goals, we're going to do it. So the idea is uh, to, um, to play with the opposition. And uh, my job with my staff is uh, to uh, guide all the players because they have to be able to, uh, to find the solution by themselves. But in the beginning, we, we need uh, to put concept in place and. Uh, yeah, uh, I can define my style of play like this. Okay, we'll go to Clay. Well, free congratulations and welcome to Thank you. Uh, an incredible city. Thank uh, you. You're an established MLS coach. Why Columbus? When I came the first time here in the stadium, when I stepped on the, on the field, I had goosebumps. Simple as that. Why? Because I come from Europe also. And this, this stadium uh, uh, is like, uh, and it's better than uh, some stadium in uh, Europe. And the crowd and uh, the way the stadium is. Uh, so I just want you to attack. <laughs> Simple as that, to attack. <laughs> okay, I like that. And, uh, and to, to be proactive and this is the way this is the way also I live, because this is a way of life, and this is um, my background. Um, 
I traveled a lot, and uh, when I came here, I saw this. And for me, the facilities and the stadium, the person in place, good people, competent people. And for me, in terms of um, MLS, this is for me one of the club, or maybe the club. I'm gonna have to be good on the on the pitch, but uh, yeah, there is uh, everything to be uh, to do something great. So that's why I came here. Uh, I will Patrick Murphy from Massive Report. You obviously played against this team over the last couple of years, but what familiarity have you made with the players already? Um, and then kind of how do you see the roster as it is currently constructed? I would say I know them really well because uh, we played uh, twice uh, this year and the, it was uh, an emotional game, <laughs> the two games. So yeah, the way I work, uh, I like to know the opposition. So for sure I know all the players, So, but I don't know the person behind that. So my job now is, is going to be to, uh, to sit with them and, uh, and uh, to get to know each other because um, I am a coach, but also I am a human being. So they have to know me, the, the way I, I work, the way I think. And, um, and yeah, so yeah, I know most of the players. And the, the idea now is uh, to uh, analyze what we need for the future. But uh, first of all, we're gonna, I'm going to an analyze what I have already and, uh, and we'll see in the future. Yeah. Well, perfect. We'll have. Oh, go ahead, Pat. Yeah. For both of you, I know, Wilfred, your past has, has been player development. Um, how key is that, Bez, in, in what you were looking for in terms of the, the young players you guys have? And, and to follow up on what I asked, Wilfred, just what do you see from a young group here, both at the first team and Crew 2 in the academy, obviously, the the Crew 2 team was, was pretty successful last year. So for anyone who's watching the World Cup, you, you can see the energy and the excitement that youth brings to the U.S. national team. Uh, and for anyone who's been around MLS, you've seen there's different ways to construct your roster. And uh, it's very important to have a blend of, of, of young players, core players, and veterans. Um, and what we've seen, especially with the integration of Crew Academy and Crew 2, is the importance to work with those players in. Um, so from the very beginning, like I said, that we identified someone like Will with his background in player development who understands the player, understands that they're going to have flaws and weaknesses, but let's focus on their strengths. Let's hire based on strengths. Let's bring them along and then work on the other elements of their game. Um, because through our academy and Crew 2, you get players who – who not only want to achieve and reach their highest potential, but they're playing for the crest, they're playing for the community. And I think someone who comes from that, that, that background understands that fully. Um, you know, I had the pleasure of, of around 10 years ago is when I, I actually met Will as part of a course that the league put on, it's called the EFCL, where uh, we partnered with the French Football Federation to, to improve our academy and development player system. And, and, I, and I believe that through that process, Will might be able to talk about it a little bit uh, more articulately, but learn how, um, not only how players learn, but how coaches learn. So our process is bringing players on, but also to work with our coaches to help player development in our system. So we're excited about having Will at the top of that pyramid to be able to work with Mark Nichols, our technical director, uh, Corey Ray, our crew two, and uh, all of our academy coaches to to find alignment in that in that process. For me, I uh, believe on it uh, because it's been my life when I was a player. So um, I was um, in the academy in France, and uh, I played uh, I played around 17 or 18 years old my first game in second division. But because of the fact that I was in the academy, so for me it's really important. It's really important to develop that. It's really important also because my objective, with a lot of ability, I have ambition, but also a lot of ability, is to to have a legacy. And for me, this is my job also. Yes, we have to win games, but at the end of the day, also we need to develop people to be able to uh, to to live and to give a legacy for the future. So that's why developing players 
developing also person, this is really important. So, uh, so that's why I do this job also. Here we go back to Clay. Tim, this didn't seem to be a well kept secret. His Will's name surfaced almost immediately. Uh, was this your number one guy? And how long? Uh, how many? How many names were in the hopper? Became our number one guy, clearly. Um, you know, with with what Will has done with his prior club over the last two years, it's it would be impossible for him not to be the guy. Um, you know, you start with a team that that you know had some players that that other teams had passed by, and you saw a person who, to take those players and to you know, use that term, coach them up, or to, to, to really get a cohesive unit and to see them work together and really play for something it looked at from the outside that was bigger than themselves, right? Team players that were sacrificing for the collective. Um, and then you saw that the way that they played, it was attractive, it was entertaining, they were scoring goals, they had the ability to dictate the game. Uh, so right from the start, when we learned that he was available, um, he became a top target. Now we obviously wanted to, to, to complete a thorough process and had a number of candidates. And in that process, we did learn that there, there's an exciting crop of, of young coaches out there. Um, and, and I think Will will be the first to tell you that. I mean, we are at a stage where I think we've developed a number of coaches who are ready to step into the first team setting. And, and a lot of assistants who haven't gotten the opportunity yet who impressed us um, as part of a part of this process. But for us, once we matched up the criteria with the person and his philosophy, it became clear that, that he was uh, the top. Coach uh, Clay Hall, ABC6, Fox 28. Um, this team was close, uh, gave up a number of leads late. It was almost incredibly uh, unusual the way they were giving games away. How do you get this team from there over the top? Um. For me, what is really important is um, this is not easy as a coach, you know, because sometimes you everything is clear, but during the moment, it's difficult to, to see that the players are not able to do what we want. So first of all, as a coach, it's difficult. We don't have all the answer, but um, the way I see my team and the way I see this kind of uh, momentum, because this is a momentum, I want my team to um, to be bold all the time. What does it mean? It means that no matter the scores, the, the idea is to stay focused on the task. What does it mean? It means that uh, where is the ball? We have to move up regarding where is the ball. So if the ball is close to the opposite goal, we should be high on the pitch. If the ball is in the halfway line, we should be a little bit lower. So for me, it's all about uh, try to dictate the play. If we cannot, I want my player to be able to be courageous, try to handle the pressure. And as soon as we have the possibility to step up the line, we do it. So this is something that we, every coach wants to do. But sometimes we have to go deeper and um, give confidence to the players. Because uh, you have to know that, um, for me, this is the way I think. All the players, they want to do well. 99% of the time, they want to do well. And sometimes, they struggle a bit because there is the, the ego. There is also, this is not easy to play uh, in front of a big crowd. When you make a mistake, maybe they're going to hide. And my objective with the staff is to give them confidence. The more they're going to make mistakes, hopefully, Going to be able to adjust, but the more is going to be an opportunity to restart in a better way. So for me, it's all about give confidence to the player, and uh, I know that sometimes team and and the office they, they will tell me, yeah, we may we make a mistake, yeah, but this is the part of the game, and for me, this is the way I see football, and uh, I have to be brave and courageous and try to uh, stay focused on the task and. Yes, the emotion, we have to play with the emotion, but um, this is not easy to be a soccer uh, uh, player. So, but again, the, the idea is to help them. Thank you, Wilfred. That is gonna conclude this portion uh, and our formal press conference stream. Uh, we will have some additional uh, 
uh, Q&A opportunities uh, within the room here for members in the media. Uh, we invite those to stick around in the room for some select photo ops. Before we go, I hope we can give a quick round of applause to all of the students and the future stars of the crew for being wonderful guests here today. So exciting to be with all of you. Once again, thanks and go crew.